Um, I'm gonna try to take the advice I just got from uh, the security guys. I walked up and he said, "Keep your head up. We'll get them next year." Um, one give Iowa credit, uh, Kirk and his staff. They executed. Uh, they had 57 rushes. We had 57 plays. Um, tough loss, particularly for our seniors. And that, to me, that's what I'm, I'm gonna make this about because this group is a group of guys that made a decision to come here before we started winning made a decision to come here sight unseen because most of them were COVID kids. Uh, this is a group that has left a runway. Uh, for the next few years, I, I promise you, will be, will be what we expect them to be. Um, the minute we walk out, I, I, I'll start reviewing and preparing us for it. We talk about finishing a lot around here, and uh, we got to finish up in Pennsylvania against Penn State next week, and we'll continue to show up seniors last night we celebrated them as a team in terms of what they've been able to accomplish and they've had an incredible contribution to this program you know three straight winning seasons three straight bowl wins um, i'm really proud of the way they've laid a foundation uh, for us to build back up on um, i'm forever grateful to them for that i grew up as a coach with this group and uh we got another opportunity next week against Penn State, and we want to send these guys out the right way. So with that, uh, I'll open it up to any questions you have. Mike, the way Iowa began today with those long drives, what does that do to a defense? What does that do to you guys who only have a handful of plays and the field to begin? I mean, it gives them confidence, obviously, um, to sustain drives. And it's, you know, when you look at what they were able to do and get executed, it's, uh, when you're dealing with a, a, a quarterback that's not healthy, it's what you would want to get accomplished. And uh, we weren't able to do it in the run game. Uh, to take the pressure off of our quarterback, we needed to be able to cover people up. And, I, you know, the last few weeks I saw us do that. Uh, today, and, and of course, when you, you talk about the run game, it takes just one breakdown, and now it looks like, hey, it's not working. And we had a few of those one-man breakdowns that didn't allow us to get into our rhythm on the offensive side to help our defense because that's what we would have needed to do. Zach, I have you guys got things going offensively behind Billy and then MJ. What was the key to getting things going? I think it started with Billy. I mean, the kid's a warrior. Um, he's been banged up all year. We don't talk about injuries. I, ever, I very rarely come in and, and talk about injuries and, and, and because those are excuses, and I'm not about that. Uh, Billy came to me and said, Coach, I want to try to go at, at and he really gave us a chance. He really was the spark. And then, you know, MJ came and he scrapped and, and fought through, um, you know, first extended time that he had. And, and I thought he did a, a good job. And I thought those two together being able to finish the drive to create a little bit of momentum to keep our defense off the field, um, it helped us. And, and, you know, the long run there at the end on the defensive side was kind of, it took it, we're within a six point, uh, we're within six in, in that long run kind of took the wind out of our sail and it goes back to complimentary football on offense, defense, and special teams where, you know, the defense on, in the first half got a couple turnovers, gave us some opportunities offensively. We, we struggled and then all of a sudden we go on offense and our defense struggles. And, you know, as the leader of this thing, man, this is what my job is to figure those things out. And I'm, I'm more optimistic about being able to figure this out, man. I, I, we're going to get it done. What is kind of the emotion of the senior class, not just giving the loss, but knowing that they're not going to be able to go? They're down, game. man. They are down. And it's all I can do to, to, to not be like them because I know the work that they have put in. I mean, you look all across the country and you see teams that are struggling like we're struggling right now. And you see people quitting, not playing, opting out to go play. And I'm not saying that that won't happen, hasn't happened. But I can just tell you, I don't see that with this group. I mean, these guys are fighters, man. They, they, they embody that, that fighter spirit, and it's, you know, hopefully it's something that they're taking from me because I'm even more uh, motivated to figure this out for, for our fan base, for our program. You know, we've had a good run here, and this gives us an opportunity to hit reset, uh, and we want to do it pretty quickly. Um, and, and, and next week is kind of part of that reset. So uh, we'll finish it the right way. One of the pillars of our program is how we finish. We want to headbutt it, and we'll go up to State College and headbutt the finish. 
they were playing both quarterbacks. I'm assuming the second time Billy came out with specific cautionary, but the first time in the first half was that planned, or did you get a spark to put MJ in? No, it was, I mean, Billy was banged up. I mean, he's been banged up for about two, three weeks now. And a week ago, the thumb affected him. Uh, this week, he didn't throw the ball until Thursday, I think. He took a lot of the reps, but we just kind of tried to rest the thumb to give him a chance. You know, he gives us the best chance to win uh, as our leader on the offensive side of the ball. But obviously, not being able to go, we try to add the run game element or try to focus and force the run game like we did a week ago. And again, the run game is the tough part when you're making calls because five guys have to be on the same page, and all it takes is one guy to maybe not be on his guy, and now all of a sudden, it's, well, the run doesn't work. And, uh, but got to give Billy credit. Uh, he tried to fight through. I give MJ a lot of credit because he took a, the run of the reps this week uh, with the ones. And we didn't help him with not being able to run the ball, but he found ways to just grind it. And he got us within the score. So the plan was to use both in the first half? Is kind of the no, the plan was to play Billy as oh, long okay. as we could. Okay. And then when he couldn't play anymore, we, we, and we took him out. And then he went and did some treatment things while he was out. Right before the half, he came up and said, Coach, let's go. I'm, I'm going to try to do it. Let's get it done. And he, he helped us. Hey, Coach. Um, say, what's up? I wanted to ask you, you know, this season, even through the losses, you've told them how proud you are of this team. But if you had to identify one reason why you know, it just never came together, at least, is there, is there one thing that stands out to you? I mean, I think each week I kind of talk about where you know, we we. Uh, you know, the last couple of years, we've lost key guys that are three and four year starters, whether it's DJ Glaze, Jalen Duncan, Spencer Anderson, Deontay Banks, Tarheep Steele, Bo Bray. Uh, a lot of guys that have played a lot of football around here over the years. And we, we built this team with high school players. And high school players have to learn to win. They have to go through some of the things we've gone through. And you see 27, a true freshman playing corner. You see 72, a true freshman playing left tackle. You see six, a true freshman playing safety. Uh, you see Mike Hershey, a true freshman playing center. Those guys, I can't rush their maturity. We put the work in, the resources to them, and they'll be better, we'll be better because of those guys. And now when you add the resources that the new landscape gives us and we're able to go maybe backfill some of the depth areas that showed up with the injuries, that's why I'm very optimistic about the direction we'll be able to go. It's tough now, but we'll, we'll learn and be able to grow from some of the painful things we've had to go through. And I know we've talked a lot about you know the crowds all year. Um, your team's senior night, it felt like there were maybe more Iowa fans than Maryland fans. There was a Let's Go Hawkeyes chant going. Was that disappointing to you and to the seniors? How do you, how do you feel about that? I don't have a feeling about that. I, I care. We always deal with what we can control, the things we can control. Uh, developing our program, uh, the seniors, uh, those guys continually. We, 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 will, uh, we will focus on the things we can control, those things we can't. Thank you, George. George, what's up? Um, you guys ran the, the almost the inverse of last week where you ran the ball better in the second half, 85 yards, and then the first half uh, it was you know coming out passing with Billy, knowing that he had the hand thing. What was the strategy behind that? Yeah, those are RPOs. And when they got nine guys in the box, there's only one unblocked guy, and so then that's where the chess match starts. And Billy threw the ball well in pre-practice. He felt it. Well, the first the first pass, he ended up getting hit, and that's where the thumb got affected again. Went and got some treatment. We put RPOs on the run game because those are the answers. Uh, once he wasn't able to go, we got we got MJ in there. And, and a guy like Stratton, who made like a sophomore walk on maybe in his first career start for them. Of course, they're going to Caleb Johnson a lot. And, can't necessarily get pressure on the quarterback, but was there a point to try to make him make some mistakes even though he didn't throw the ball that many times today? Uh, I thought he made a couple of mistakes in the run game, but it's a matter of uh, they were able to rush the ball to take the pressure off of him. That's a, a veteran line, a veteran group. Uh, we're not there yet. And I tell you what, these lessons that we'll take from this this season, and Alan Haram, you know, he's a sophomore. Uh, Lou Ball, first year starter, he's a sophomore. Uh, you, you throw in Michael Hershey, you throw in Therese Davis, all right, on the, you know, on the left side. You, those guys will, be, will benefit from this year. And uh, again, that's the part of the patience that I don't have. I'm learning, I'm trying, I try. I'm doing everything I can to be patient. Um, but there comes a point in time where, you know, they got to grow up. And, and I, I saw them grow up the last two to three weeks when you talk about our ability to run the ball. That's proof that it's coming. 
and now we'll backfill it, get some added help in here. We'll hit this reset button, like I said, pretty quickly, uh, and, and I'm really motivated. Coach, you, the team came roaring back from a deficit today. You have been the biggest cheerleader in saying that this is going in the right direction. What is your motivation? What motivates you to be so positive about what's going on here in the future in College Park? Because tell me what being negative will do. What, what will being negative do? I mean, I, I just choose to not live my life that way. Uh, if I felt sorry for myself and was negative about everything I've had to endure as a, as a person, yeah. I wouldn't be standing here in front of you. And so it's my job to model that for my team, for these young men, because they're our future. And you know what? Sometimes you wake up and life turns out like it did today. And you better get up, look yourself in the mirror, and, and a lot like that mascot we have, the turtle, take the next step forward, just keep going. And so that's who I am. That's what I'm going to continue to be for this program as long as they'll have me. And you'll continue to see me be who I am. I'm very, very comfortable with that. And my team will represent that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.